Hello Internet, my name's Ryan and this is Ryan Builds Wheels. Welcome to episode one of Quick Dirty Tips, a series of wheel building tips that are quick and DI worthy. I am an angry man in a garage who wants to tell you more about wheels more efficiently. Doing a quick and dirty series with very little editing means you get more wheel building videos and I get to release more videos on a more regular basis, so we all win. Today, more crosses in your spokes does not create a stronger wheel. I'll go into more detail another day about wheel geometry, but a common thing that you hear time and time again is people saying that, oh, you know, how many crosses should I put in a wheel? And lots of people say as many as possible, or a three cross wheel is stronger, or if you can build it four cross, you should, and so on and so forth. One of the issues to start with is that we don't have a very good definition about what wheel strength is. That in itself is a longer conversation. Are we talking about wheel stiffness? Are we talking about longevity whereby spokes are going to fatigue less, etc.? Are we talking about stiffness or like total strain and load that a wheel can take? These are several different factors and so talking about wheel strength is erroneous and often misguided. It's a shortcut that is pointless in taking. So. How many crosses should you have in a wheel? I've grabbed this little e-bike wheel that I've just been building for a customer as a great demonstration. It's a bit of a fringe case uh, because the rim is so small, it's 16 inches, and uh, the motor is relatively large. You can imagine that what I'm gonna talk about would be even more of a problem if this motor was larger. And here you'll see that I've built this wheel one cross. Each spoke on each side of the flange only crosses another spoke once. And lots of people would say, hey, this is a, you know, it's a load carrying wheel on a cargo bike. Shouldn't it have more crosses and make it stronger, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera? The answer is no. What you're trying to do is balance two things. Firstly, you want a tangent angle as much as possible on any wheel that's going to hold torque. By that, I mean anything with disc brakes, drive, be that gears or a motor and a tangent angle means that rather than going straight out from the hub like this that would be called radial a tangent means that your spokes are going to be at an angle away from the hub not radial but tangential so tangent angle you need that to put up with the strains and torque created by drive and braking forces however you can't have too many because you've got two other things to consider here and that's why too many crosses can make certain wheels bad What's gonna happen is, if you get too many crosses in a wheel like this, the angle of entry into the rim right here, that's gonna get more and more extreme. If you've got an extreme angle of entry into the rim, then something real simple is gonna happen. There's gonna be a strain, ugh, a strain on my ability to hit record when I balls up a line, leaving me to have to edit this video realize that I didn't record the segment I needed to, and then come back to shoot it again the next day. So let's get back on track, shall we? So much for doing it in one shot. If you have too many crosses, then that's going to increase the angle of entry into the rim. And that's nice and simple. It's how far from straight in 90 degrees your spoke goes into the rim. So most nipples out there can only manage about seven or eight degrees and that's speaking about nipples such as Sapim's polyax or those with a ball and socket head. Nipples with straight sides where they interface with the rim have even less of a room for error and if you have too much of an angle of entry into the rim you're going to create strain and stress points where the spoke enters the nipple, the spoke is traveling at an angle that is more than the nipple can take, stress rises you're going to be snapping them at the thread. The second thing to look out for is if you try to squeeze too many crosses into a hub, even when entry of angle is okay, you may end up with a case whereby the spoke itself will cross the head of the spoke next to it. So in this case, you're gonna have them either touching or even overlapping. You can guess what overlapping spokes are gonna do. They're gonna rub against each other and slowly break there as well. So in either case, you don't want too many crosses. How do you find the right number of crosses for a given wheel? Well, your kind of job as a wheel builder is to try getting as much of a tangent angle as possible. In most cases, I'm generalizing somewhat here. And in my video about spoke calculation, I introduced you to Roger Musson's The Spoke Length Project, which is an excellent spoke length calculator, which will also give you facts and figures for the two things that I've just talked about. 
spoke entry of angle into the rim and how much space there is between spokes where they cross. So there's no real excuse to go wrong. Aside from e-bike wheels, one of the most common places to see this kind of error is people building with internal gear hubs, such as Alphines, Roll-Offs, etc. Whereby, just like this, you've got a larger hub, which automatically means that spoke entry angle is going to increase. So don't make those mistakes. There you have it. Quick and dirty tips, number one, done, dusted, in the bag. You can follow me on Instagram, you should hit like and subscribe right here on the Ryan Builds Wheels channel. And you should go and check out and support me on Patreon for only like £3.50 a month or something. Buy me a beer, it would be lovely. See you again, subscribe for more quick and dirty wheel tips. Bye!